Christians believe that everything that God does, He does it for a purpose. And the God that we serve does not make mistake. So even though we are in a place like this, we are still going to start in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Without wasting much time, I'm going to invite our own Deacon Richard Pedia Bediacon to come and lead us in a few congregational songs. And then after that, we will start with an opening prayer. Amen. Deacon.
Yes, indeed, he brought him here into this earth. But at it, it his own time, he has taken him away. <laughs> that he is leaving us but we believe that he is in your bosom because your word says nothing can separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus this morning oh Lord God Almighty we just want to say thank you for giving us that life we will know that we will see him again oh Lord God Almighty this morning come into our aid come and control the affairs oh Lord we pray that, O oh Lord, you come and take the sadness away. We pray that, O oh Lord, you will make us rejoice in what you have done through his life. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. When peace like a river attended my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my Lord, thou hast taught me to say, it is well with my soul. Shall we all please rise? When peace
soul of our father and our uncle. Hallelujah. Amen. We shall call the family representative to read the biography of our dear Mr. Richard Ejeri. It is well. Of Aquami. For I am already being poured out like a drink offering, and the time for my departure is near. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness. For the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me but also to all who have longed for his appearing. Mr. Richard A.J. was born on March 14, 1954, to the late Openin Osei of blessed memory, and the late Ya Pokuya, also known as Ya Mansa of blessed memory, both from Kona in Ashanti region of Ghana. Kosei, or Ejasei, as he was affectionately called by many, was the fourth of 11 children. Kosei started his early education at Methodist Primary School A, Akuna, in 1959 to 1965. He continued at local authority middle school, also in Kuna, from 1966 to 1969. After successfully passing the common entrance examination, he was admitted into the prestigious Presbyterian Secondary School in Abatifi Kwa'u from 1970 to 1975. He completed and passed the GC, GCE O-Level Certification Exam in 1975. He proceeded to a three-year post-secondary training college at Akokri in the Ashanti region from 1975 to 1978. After completing the teacher's training college, he was stationed at State Boys in Kumasi. Richard was a great sportsmanship during his school days. He was one of the top strikers in his youthful days at both Abatifi and Akokri. He received a special invitation to join the Ghana Academical Soccer Team. During this, um, his teaching days at the State Boys, he trained, coached the school soccer team, including the great Anthony Abua, former Ghanaian professional soccer player. Like many ambitious men, Kosai made the decision to travel to Nigeria in the 1980s to pursue greener pastures. He thought for a few years in Nigeria before returning to Ghana where he taught at Okanfu Primary School before transferring to Domi Primary School. In 1993, Richard immigrated to the U.S., settling in Mount Vernon for a few years. He worked hard and tirelessly to provide for his family back home in Ghana. Eventually, his wife joined him in the States in 1998. He eventually relocated to law with his family in 2000. He started working, he started working at the atrium at Drum Hill. Immediately, he moved to law. He worked as a patient care assistant for a few years. They are proud to gain an employment and Tuxbury State Hospital, Department of Mental Health. He worked at Tuxbury for over 10 years as a mental health worker until his unfortunate accident in October 2020. He eventually retired in May 2021 and was looking forward to a peaceful retirement life. He was loved and appreciated by his co-workers for his kindness, generosity, humor, and compassionate personality. Richard was a family man to the core. 
sacrificing personal comfort most times for the growth of his family. He contributed immensely to the education of his children and some of his nephews in Ghana. He took every opportunity that came his way to help those in need, especially their lives would be made better. To his children, he was an available father, being there to tell stories and help with basic arithmetic when they were kids. He was also a strict disciplinarian, never failing to discipline his children when they veered off the right course. After all, he was a teacher. Hand built in, in them tenants that would be instrumental to their growth as useful citizens. He also loved his grandchildren dearly. Every time he visits or they visit at home, he finds way to entertain them. To his wife, he was a backbone and normal and moral support. Even though, like every human, he erred occasionally, and he was not perfect. He always ensured he settled any differences they had in due time. He dotted on and, and vice versa. He created an environment where both were shareholders in the family growth. Richard Kose was a very jovial individual with a kind, generous heart, and a lovely disposition. This endeared him to many people. He would gladly give the shirt off his back to anyone who asked. He would also make light of any situation saying, I'm by the side, and yet if it hadn't happened, that it wouldn't have been good. Although Richard was raised in a Christian home, he came to support and know the Lord after his union with his wife. He received his water baptism in the early 1990s at the Church of Pentecost, New Achimwata, Accra. He grew love the Lord. He grew to love the Lord and actively attended church with his wife as often as he could. His favorite song, Osu Yawodia, Asasusu Yawodia, Ohini Biara and Tisewo was always on his lips. He always took to heart Psalm 34 verse 19. The righteous person may have many afflictions, but the Lord delivers him from them all, which comforted him during difficult times. In the early hours of August 28, 2021, following the day surrounded by following the day surrounded by uh, family and loved ones. Paul said, you were a husband, a father, a brother, uncle, and friend to many. Before death plucked you from our midst, even though we are saddened by the loss, you take, we take solace in the word of God, which says, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will, uh, will live even if he dies. And we believe that you are living and resting in the bosom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. And we shall take our scripture reading. I will humbly call upon the goodness of our compassion. Praise the Lord. We have two scripture readings this morning. The first one is taken from Revelation 20, 12 to 15. And the second one is Ecclesiastes 9, 14, and 15. <coughs> Revelations 20, 12 to 15. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God, and books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. 
and the dead were judged according to their works by the things which were written in the books. The sea gave up the dead who were in it, and death and hate delivered up, and the dead who were in them, sorry, and the dead who were in them, and they were judged, each, each one according to his works. 14. Then death and hate were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Amen. I'm going back to Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verses 14 and 15. And I read, There was a little city with few men in it, and a great king came against it, besieged it, and built great snares around it. Now, there was found in it a poor wise man, and he, by his wisdom, delivered the city. Yet, no one remembered the same poor man. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Once our dear sister was reading the biography of Mr. Richard today, she made mention that his favorite song was for so many of the As I say, many of the For him, we are an empty song. Hallelujah. Amen. Why don't we send this song to invite to the Tony on the district pastor of Church of Pentecost this week? I know what it is. Hallelujah. So
We thank God for this beautiful morning. Uh, what I want to talk to you about is called Books of Remembrance. Books of Remembrance. I am not too old, but the little I've noticed in our world today is that people try to make a name for themselves whilst here on earth. People try to erect statues, if you remember, Saddam Hussein had a huge statue in Iraq. Huge statue, you can't miss it if you were to go to Iraq. Little did he know that a certain Bushman will come who will make sure that that statue was pulled down. In fact, scientists have said that if you pass through this, our world, no matter who you are, after about 50 years, people will forget about you. They will. In Ecclesiastes, we heard of a certain man. The Bible testifies about the man that he's a wise man. In fact, the Bible continues to tell us a story about this man that a great king came to attack his city. And remember, I began to look. I put my back down. What? So we are with you. We are with you. However, we are also strengthened by the fact that our brother is going to a better place. So our weeping is mixed with joy. It's mixed with joy. I want to assure you, it is not how long, I know, would have wished that he would have lived for long, but for how long? For how long? It's not how long a person's life is that makes it more worth the while. Indeed, the wisdom that Solomon had has nothing to do with the age of Methuselah. And Jesus Christ himself lived 33 and a half years. But made great impacts. So we believe in that. And we trust that the impact that he has made will run through the family. Hallelujah. Amen. So when our sister read from Revelations, we took note of some books. See, God has got some books in heaven. So books were opened. So God will never forget. Why? Because he has got books. Angels are recording. And then the next verse talks about one particular book. So there are books that has a record of all the things we are doing, good or bad. Then there's one particular book. It is called the Lamb's Book of Life or the Book of Life. As for that book, maybe let me talk about that book first before I go to the book of works. In fact, if your name is not in the book of life, you are hell bound. You are going to hell. That one will not mean words. Apostle Paul, he went beyond just saying that I'm going to heaven by saying that as for me, I have fought the good fight. I even know that there remains for me a crown. Paul could talk about his crowns. I was here. Sometimes we're fighting each other with somebody's dream. Oh, somebody had a dream. Look, nobody's dream is greater than the word of God. Amen. Amen. Nobody's dream is greater than this word. Amen. So we are encouraged. It's going to be with the Lord. Amen. I want to also admonish ourselves. No man. So today, if you want your name to enter the Lamb's Book of Life, I plead with you. People are dying. COVID has taken many lives. Listen to me. Nobody is accepted from death. Even Christians are not accepted from death. Why? Because we are in a fallen world. Some of our apostles, they have died. Even Pastor Michael, who started the church, he has died. Enter into eternal bliss. Amen. You go to the presence of God. 
So I'm appealing to you. The second type of books, that one is plural, books. I'll just start reading. He says he saw the dead. That particular quotation is actually referring to the unbelievers who will be resurrected later. But the fact why I brought that text is that God has got books. I told you, human beings will not remember you. Even today, when I mention some names of some apostles, you, you will not even connect. Mm -hmm. We have people like Apostle Dufo, Apostle Ankama. Who, can remember, who even remembers them? You will not remember. So those who try to put their names on buildings, I have thought about this, that a day will come, or some years are coming, human beings will not build with blocks. Another material will be introduced. <laughs> For some of the buildings that we are trying to put our names on them, it will be broken down. Mm -hmm. Nobody will remember you. He talked about love, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, 1 to 8. Apostle Paul talked about three things that will abide. Mm. Three things, and I saw that in the mind of Paul, the gold, the silver, the precious stones, they were those three things that will abide because of the six things, only three can abide if you take them through fire. Gold, silver, precious stones. And Apostle Paul, I'm saying in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, he mentioned three things that will abide when all is said and done, the first is love. What is all trying to say? Life. Some of your expectations in life may never be met. But be assured that once you exit this earthly realm and you enter into the heavenly realms, as for God, He's so faithful that He says, Your labor will never be in vain. Yes. The Lord will reward you. Amen. So we sing a song. Did you mind that? Because he said in reality. If you have this understanding, and you are laboring, mommy, and they don't make you a dickiness, don't be. No. No, that all of us will leave. No, all of us will leave. This year, or was it last year, two of my mates left. Pastor Matipoku, he came into ministry the same year. He left. Mrs. Sadaka, we went to first year UST the same year. She left. All of us will live one day. But let us work motivated with love. The second thing that will remain, Apostle Paul mentioned it, he says faith. In fact, if you read Romans chapter 14, verse 23, he says anything that we will do without faith becomes a service. So Christ. Them that he did follow, he called them. I pray that the exit of our brother will encourage them to continue to work home. But I want to encourage the family. Like I said, the family will be with you, but it's going to be. It's with you when I feel that's what I want. Joy! So we do that. Give it a little bit more. We thank you, we bless you, we give you the glory for giving us that kingdom of God. Indeed, your word has affirmed that all pains, including the pains, struggle, suffering, give them the grace so that they will be of benefit to the church. Amen. Let the family be of benefit to America, Amen. to Ghana, and to the rest of the world. Let all of us as believers who are beholding today's service and our brother as he's laid in the coffin, may we be encouraged to God to go labor on, knowing that our labor shall not be in vain. We pray the Lord, you will preserve all of us. Keep us, O oh God, from the vicissitudes of life, from this pandemic, and enable us, O oh God, to continue to work. In your name have we prayed, and all shall shout, Amen. 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 God bless you, Pastor. Abide with me for the evening time. The darkness deepens, Lord, with me abide. When other helpers fail and comforts flee, help of the helpless, abide with me.
Fitness at that uncle's son, who can be of the same song. happy to know all of you are here to honor his life this very moment. In Revelation 14 verse 13, the Bible says, And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Write, Blessed are the dead, which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, said the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. Organizing our thoughts to pay this deserving tribute to our dear brother has been a difficult one. Difficult in the sense that we did not expect this day of pain, agony, and sadness will arise so soon. Some of us spoke to him just a few days before he passed away. 
But I did was jovial on even matters that were serious, yet he will find solutions to that particular situation. He was a man of the people, father to many, and a hero to many that knew him. He stood by during difficult times, including the loss of our mother in 1972 and father in 1973. He was always there when we needed someone to talk to. But our Richard was a man who unconditionally believed in not only sharing, but also caring for others. Richard had big dreams, and it's unfortunate that his life ended short. We miss your kindness, support, and humor. I hope most of us here today will find a moment and think of the fun memories we had with Richard. He was an experienced athlete, an agile and talented footballer. Some used to call him a Rodney, which means great king. And others referred to him as a master dribbler. As a Christian, his favorite song was The Wooden. Even though he's gone, his good deeds and memories will live in us forever. He will always be remembered in our hearts. His last words to us are still echoing in our years. Due to his profession as a teacher, Rachel will explain everything to your understanding and always make sure all will receive the proper education. Your departure has put us in a state of dilemma. Richard, your family wishes you back. Who will show us love? Who will show concern? Who will support us? Who will bring the necessary solution when there is family issue? You have left a big void in this family. At the end of the day, we know it is impossible to change God's plans. May God rest your soul in peace. That we fed you. Mr. Richard A.J. was a member of the Church of Pentecost. Lowell Central, and he has contributed a lot to where the church is right now. We shall call upon representative from Church of Pentecost Lowell Central to read the church's tribute. Tribute by the Church of Pentecost Lowell Central Assembly. Blessed are those who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the Spirit. They are blessed indeed, for they will rest from their hard work, for their good deeds will follow them. Revelations 14, 13. It is with heavy hearts that our church mourns the sudden death of a caring, humble, gentle, and well-respected brother. We are here today to pay tribute to our dear brother, Mr. J also known as Kosei. We all have known him in a variety of roles, as a husband, father, in-law, grandfather, brother, co-worker, and a great friend. Our hearts are sore. Tears cannot hide. Yet, it comforts us to know that as Jesus Christ died and rose again, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep in Jesus. In 2004, Mr. Ajay became a member of the newly created Lowell Assembly of the then New England District. It was a great privilege to have associated with him in his fam and his family at our church. Mr. Ajay was baptized into the Church of Pentecost by Reverend Kweju 
at the new Achimota Assembly in Accra, Ghana, in the 1990s. As a new convert from a different faith, he humbled himself to accept the teachings and the doctrines of the church, thereby developing an exceptional pride, love, and zeal for God and the church. He was filled with so much joy and peace as he and his wife and their children, who were members already, fellowship together. His favorite Bible text, as was said in the biography, was Psalm 34, verse 19. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of it all. And his favorite song, we cannot stress that enough. The heavens are yours. The earth is yours. There is no king like you. Amen. This song has been his most cherished from the time he became born again in Ghana to the time of his demise in the United States. Our brother was a real family man who stood for good family values and practiced, practiced them also. All the selfless and tireless work of his wife, Dickness Patricia Knedu, as a local women's leader, district women's executive, and a presbyter of the church could be credited to him as well due to the immense support he continually gave her. He was seen many times with his wife, visiting new members, the sick, new mothers, and many more. And during such moments, he would happily carry cases of water, bags of rice, and heavy items to climb long staircases where there were no elevators. Mr. J and his family's enormous support and dedication to the church have greatly contributed to it, its growth and strength. The church in Lowell is grateful and blessed to have had the opportunity to spend several years with our brother until his mortal breath ceased on Sunday, August 29, 2021. We will dearly miss him. On behalf of the Church of Pentecost, we would like to thank everyone today for your thoughts and prayers, the numerous calls, visits, gifts, and many comforting words to our Deaconess Patricia and the family. We wish the family God's special blessings of peace and comfort as we look forward to Christ's soon coming. What an awesome day that will be. May our brother's soul find eternal rest with the Lord till we meet again. Amen. 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 And we'll listen to the tribute from the children. difficult day of my life and our family's life. But I'm gonna to try to make I'm out the courage to try to mean this. This is a tribute to our father from all of us, our children. In Revelations 24, 21 verse 4 it says, You will wipe every tears from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain. For the old order of things has passed. Writing this tribute to you has been one of the most difficult things your children has had to do because there are not enough words to put on paper. Even though we know you are peacefully resting in the bosom of Christ, we miss you terribly and we wish you were still here with us. It's true as the saying goes, death leaves a memory no one can heal, but one leaves a memory no one can steal. To the world, you are one person, but to us, you are our world. A loving father who provided, 
care, nurture, and sacrifice everything for your family. We never made a fortune, but we never lacked anything. Together with Mom, you worked tirelessly to provide for us. Both of you were the glue that held the family together. Despite any problems we faced as a family, you made sure it would not penetrate nor puncture the shield that God has made for us. And instead, you used these experiences to create closer and bring us closer to our, as a family. Even when you were going through difficult medical treatments that could easily inca incapacitate you, you never once held or even complained. You still got up every single day to help mom clean the house, prepare meals, do laundry, or even iron the clothes for every single one of us. You are indeed the very definition of a good father, perfect in every single way. You left behind a legacy that is worth more than silver and gold, a legacy of selfless, kindness, forgiveness, humility, appreciation, and most importantly, you love each and every single person generally. Our father was a very generous man and a very kind-hearted man. He generally put the needs of others above his. Apart from providing for his children and family, he also did his best for his extended family, his brothers, his sisters, his nieces, and his nephews. There's not enough time to mention all the good deeds that my father did for every single one of us. For those who lived, whose lives he touched, we believe you know. Even in his final days, he was telling my mom he needed to send money back to the people back home. This was just his nature. This is just the person that he was, deep down. Although your sudden departure has left a massive void in our hearts, we know that we were one of the luckiest to have a second opportunity as a family to spend more time with you after your unfortunate accident last October. God gave us more time to chance, more time and more chance to make things right and create more memories. Opportunity we will forever be grateful for and memories we will forever cherish in our hearts. Your departure has transformed the entire family and united, united us in love. As much as we initially wrestled with God, concerned with your glory, we, have, we are at peace knowing that God knows best and he knew how much he needed to rest from this dark and difficult world. No child ever wants to see the day come by where they must utilize their father. Heartbroken is an understatement when it comes to describing this feeling. Surely, we will mourn his loss if only time will heal these wounds. However, knowing the person that my father was, we believe that he would have wanted us to celebrate his life and legacy. That we know this death will separate us, and we know someday exit just like you, and we will meet again. Please know that the family has left the family that you left behind is united more than ever in God and in love. We miss you, and you will forever be remain in our hearts. Rest in peacefully in the bosom of God. So we need to get it. Amen. Before we take the tribute from the leader of sin, I think our captain of Eva's host and guy. Captain of Eva's host and guy.
not be able to wake up. to read the tribute to their loving husband. I will first of all would like to apologize for the length of the tribute. If time and space would allow, she could write a book. Hallelujah. Amen. Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 2 to 3. Vanity of vanities, says the preacher. Vanity of vanities, all is vanity. What profit has a man from all his labor in which he toils under the sun? Amen. All gathered here might be in wonder as I, the widow, consistently refer to my late husband as Brahmi or Kose in this tribute. However, the above statement is illustrative enough to infer that Brahmi was not just a loving husband, but as a brother and a friend to me. Brahmi and I met in our hometown, Kona, in the Ashanti region of Ghana, during one of his usual visits home from Nigeria. Interestingly, my dear late husband, Brahmi, was then a teacher residing in Nigeria who had come home for a visit. Our love for each other grew and later resulted in a marriage. After getting married, Brahmi and I traveled back to Nigeria stayed there for some time and moved back to Ghana. Due to Brahmi's persistent desire to help train children and in the teaching profession particularly, Brahmi went back into teaching in Ghana after we had returned from Nigeria to Ghana. Kose taught in a couple of public schools including schools in St. John's, Ofanko, and finally Dome or in Accra. Whilst I also engaged in petty trading, by then, we had had four of our children. Life was a struggle, but my husband never stopped pushing. While as a teacher in Domain, he had the opportunity to travel abroad. Brokhami's ambition to travel abroad became a reality, therefore he traveled to the U.S. After two years of stay in the U.S., precisely in New York, he returned home, Ghana, to visit us. As a current husband with his family at heart, Brahmi, although still new to the American system, discussed with me plans to have us join him in the United States. As a man of his word, he worked tirelessly. Therefore, my children and I finally joined Kosei, as he was affectionately called in the US. Kosei was a foresighted man. He could envision better life opportunities for us especially for our children in Massachusetts. Therefore, he single-handedly relocated us all to Lowell, Massachusetts, two years after we had joined him in New York until his demise. In lieu of your comfortability and sleep, you worked tirelessly in the night as a CNA in a nursing home. In addition to working during the day as a dry cleaner, just so my children and I could make ends meet. And also in our attempt to cling onto the American dream. Thank you, Kosei. Our children and I appreciate your hard work. Regarding your support and assistance as a husband, I am still struggling to look for how best to paint such a picture for people gathered here to understand. Ko, you are the husband every woman dreamt to have. You are overly accommodating and respectful of my views, opinions, and advice. My late husband really understood the saying, two heads are always better than one, and strive endlessly to make it a practicality in our marriage. Quite saying, you were a very humble person by nature. You lived with me in understanding. You gave me honor. You hardly took a decision without consulting me. My inputs and opinions were always given a consideration. This quality made me grow more and more in love with 
with and respected you. We did everything together, including taking cool evening walks and early morning walks in our neighborhood. We went to grocery stores together. That is when I'm not able to go with you. Jose will single-handedly go and shop to make sure there is food in the house. During the winter on snow days, Ko would drive to my workplace to clean my snow on the car and also to clean the driveway so that when I got home, I could find a place to park. On days when the snows are heavy, Kosei would drive and pick me up from my workplace and bring me home so that I'll be safe. And it's worthy of note at this point that in Accra, we used to live in a compound house. Brown Carmel literally did house chores that many men, ordinarily, would think of as women's responsibilities. You showered and cared for the kids. You fetched and carried buckets of water on your head. You did the laundry, washed dishes, cooked for us, to mention but a few. Until your accident at home, there were many things that I didn't know how to do it because you stepped in to do it all. For example, I still struggle to do laundry at home because you never let me do one. Kosei's love for God and the work for the body of Christ was an epitome of an example of all to emulate. Although Kosei was in those days a staunch member of the John Africania Church, pastor by Osafu Comfort Damwa of the Blessed Memory, he never resisted or prevented me and my children from attending the Church of Pentecost, a different church. Characteristics of many African men literally make an authoritative attempt to ask all the family, wife and children to go to his church. Kosei never for once stopped me and the children from attending church, and a different church from his, for that matter. Yearning for Kosei to instant join, my, join me, my prayers became answered by God, which led Brahma in joining me and the children at the Church of Pentecost, New Achimota District, Accra. This can only be a testament to my late husband's insatiable love for God and the work of the body of Christ. Jose's faith in Christ brimmed with the passage of time. This led to my late husband's getting baptized in the 90s by Reverend Quijui. He often would take the lead to get the kids ready for church. He was loved by the church members. Brokami, I heard your favorite song. We just sang the song. Three days ago, I heard it, and I was wondering who was singing that song. Ko, I miss you so much. I do miss you so much. Ko say, you'll be remembered from one of your cherished and treasured Bible verses. You supported my ministry as a deaconess and also a women's leader with an unquestionable passion and enthusiasm. The day will never be forgotten. That fateful day in October last year, when you mysteriously fell at home, will forever continue to linger on my mind. Call, you could not. You couldn't until your death. Explain vividly to us what really happened. I still may never find answers to my questions. I remember the evening before this day when you went out with Kweku to buy things. You had always been on your feet until that day. You went to buy strong. Least did anyone think an accident was awaiting. Ah, Oko. I miss you dearly. <laughs> well, it's been five weeks since I heard your jokes. It's been five weeks since I saw your working hands. Five weeks since I asked you about what you would eat. Five weeks since you asked to iron my clothes. Oh, I miss you so much. Brock Roman, your house that we see lying lifelessly now by your side today. They were hands that have accomplished so much for me and my children. You treated me like a queen, literally spoiled me. For the many years spent together from the very day we got married until your passing, 
you never abandoned me. You had always been my pillar and my backbone. You never grew tired of taking care of me and my children. Now I'll conclude by saying that, call my children and I will thank you so much for everything you have done. Unfortunately, we had the opportunity to return in full the same kindness, love and support you provided. Efia, Naku, Nanecha, and Kofi, even though they took care of you before you passed, we would have wished you had lived longer for us to pay you back in full all that you have done. Your grandchildren will miss you. Unfortunately, you did not wait to see the fourth one, who is due to be born next week. Kosei, Kwebu said he was going to prepare the backyard so we can sit and relax. But then you didn't wait to see it. Anytime I go on my knees, I thank God so much for giving you to me as a husband. I thank you for being the husband I described as described in 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 7. The children also thank you for all you did for them. I have lost a gem. My dear Papa Biaira, go I miss you. Who can be a replacement for the gem? None. None. None that I can think of. Go me also. I will never get your kind. I am forever grateful. However, I am confident in the fact that our children do exhibit your qualities of hard work and kindness. So you did not leave me single-handed. You told me we are retiring together next year. Now how can I go together without you?
The Bible teaches us that it is better to be in the house of mourning and mourn with those who are mourning. I would like us to pray for the family that the Lord will grant them strength. Shall we say something to be with the family? Jesus promised us he will never leave us or forsake us. He will be with us until the very end. We are praying that the Lord of Comfort will send the Spirit to comfort the family. Even in very, very, very difficult times, he will wrap his hands around the family. May the Lord use those things sustain this family. He brings them together. And he revealed himself unto them. And he breathed unto them one more time. Even in the name of Jesus. We are praying for the widow. We are praying for the children. We are praying for the grandchildren. We are praying for all the family members. Even loved ones and friends who have lost. Even the church of God. We pray that the Lord will strengthen the church. We pray that the Lord will strengthen the family. Even in Jesus mighty name. Amen. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning. We thank you for the life of our dear brother and father and member, grandfather and family member. Thank you for bringing him into our world, that he will exhibit the holy character, that his life will shine and attract many on to you. We thank you for the many works you performed through me, and today you let us know that we have books that you record our deeds in. Father, we thank you for this life. A life that is well lived. And now we bear this family before you, our dear God. You have given us your life. And you be with us even when we go through fire. You be with us when we go through the storms. You not let the water overtake us. And therefore we bear this family before you come in the name of Jesus. We bring our dear mother before the Lord sustain me. You are the Lord who sustains us. Sustain her frame, even in Jesus' name. We lift our brothers and our sisters before you, Father. We pray together with your children. We soak them in the blood of Jesus. We are praying that even in the midst of this situation, they will find hope in you. For Christ in us is the hope of glory. Lord, our prayer is that you bear the family up and support them. May they even be able to say that in the passing of our Father, we have become united. In the passing of our Father, we are more strengthened. In the passing of our Father, our walk with the Lord has become closer than before. Father, we pray that anything that will call them to weep hopelessly, we cancel in the name of Jesus. Because their hope is in you, may you continue to support them. Now we pray for the church. Father, we are praying that the faith of men will be strengthened even in these times. You know, when times like this come, people question their faith. See, God does not exist. But we are praying that this will be a testament that indeed those who rest in the Lord rest well. Father, support the church and even the family. As we depart from here, even to the burial site, we pray that you continue to strengthen us so that between now and then, we we'll keep our gaze on you. May the Lord be with us and strengthen us even in these difficult times. Amen. But before we call you, we have a very special tribute from Mr. Kodiro Poko.
ena openi eye lotu ma na lotu nu mu no onse o kotwa passport picture o chia ho na me me dia na minim inti ma chia me ho mi twa no fu inti esan se openi ni yam ye na o ye bibi ma wa o pese ehie ye inti no me de bra no 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 ka je mi se ma ye fo mso inti me chia me ho na mi twa foto do na mfa ma inti mi ye sa sa 1998 de na me ye ye no anye yi inti me ko e be se tu ista no sa fra mi se no to do ma se di bi na e mo ma ka kra inti o cheche mi se de si ye ni nyina eno ma me emeli form no e bre no a eno no a fe le form no no de ma inti de year 2000 ena mi saka mi sana mi be dru mi be dru ha no anche eno ka chere mi se o fe se o free new york e ye ma nbe no no ba boston Isan se openi ni yamiye no dwen ni pa ho odimi ko na dwam ko chere na dwam penni se o ko inti odini nua ekuma be chana mai me ne openi no ye dwuma ko si bra me ankasa mi hu se afidi me pe dwuma foforo ena me pe dwuma foforo na sere ye nyina ye nim no opani a oda ho yi ye ni e wo he ya hra de pa ade ba ko am nim fa opani mo se o ye migration officer asama me ke en se ye ni eti ye nyina ye di ho adanse se e bia a fare ama o ba o yire ubu se ni bia o fre papa yi na ubisa no asemo a kakra mi nim se afie de your support on kan chira o se fa fo no to so me fra o se edi fa wa ko e na o fa le ama na o jina ha no kan chira o se unya o win kam ye se ya o beti ma fa le ama ni pa ba ko na ni pa mi ni na wa kan chira mo am pay ni pa bia em se min ti min ka ni ho asem ye nyina ye nim se di ositie inti a hire immigration officer fa o yi ni na ni ameka ni se o nyame ni nim ni a o ye ma no ma sa abri abi a to ye ni o nyame na bi ya ma o kuna fo e ma adofo no abusia ni ameka ni se o nyame e be kwa ma rakame chi yesu na bam kum nyame do enka ho do me boni biara enko hawo de ye de ye nyame fa wo sie ye be sie mo afibo de ye de ye da chi
Transcends all understanding. Rest and abide with us, even now and forevermore. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Okay, okay.
Hallelujah. <laughs>
coffin for the departed so you may do so after which I shall do the committal. Lord you have been our dwelling place throughout all generations before the mountains were born or you brought forth the earth and the world from everlasting to everlasting you are God you turn man back to dust saying return to dust O sons of men for a thousand years in your sight are like a day that has just gone by. Or like a watch in the night. You sweep men away in the sleep of death. They are like the new grass of the morning. Though in the morning it springs up new, by evening it is dry and withered. We are consumed by you and terrified by your indignation. You have set our iniquities before you, our secret sins, in the light of your presence. All our days pass away under your wrath. We finish our years with a moan. The length of our days is 70 years or 80. If we have the strength, yet their span is but trouble and sorrow. For they quickly pass and we fly away. Who knows the power of your anger? For your wrath is as great as the fear that is due you. Therefore teach us to number our days aright, that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Relent, O oh Lord. How long will it be? Have compassion on your servants. Satisfy us in the morning with your unfailing love, that we may sing for joy and be glad all our days. Make us glad for as many days as you have afflicted us. Where he has done this, when the Son himself will be made subject to him, who put everything under him, so that God may be all in all. We'll take one song, after which you will lower the casket. Yes, uh, one song. Oh, I could do okay.
For as much as it has pleased the Almighty God by his great mercy to take unto himself the soul of our dear brother Richard, we commit his body to the ground. Earth to earth, ashes to ashes, and dust to dust. In sure and certain hope of the resurrection, through our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change the body of our humiliation, that it may be like unto his body of his glory. According to the mighty working whereby he is able to subdue all things unto himself. And also shout a big amen. amen. So that uh, you can put it. body is to be in the presence of the Lord. May you, O oh God, receive the spirit and the soul of our father, our brother, our uncle, until we meet again on your great return. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. amen. And now shall we all share the grace together? Amen. Grace, grace of our Lord, Lord and Savior Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us now and forevermore. Amen. On behalf of the family, we thank our minister, we thank the Lord Almighty who has given us a perfect day for this ceremony. Mm. And we also thank all our ministers who are present here. We thank our church leaders, 
Dickness, Dickens and Dicknesses, and the entire church, and also all the visitors who came from various places. We thank you for all your support. May the Lord richly bless you for what you have done in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Oh, I'm going to go. 